What did the nuns of the Maria Fir Al Monastery do? The Catholic Church, it houses the servants of God. The nuns who live there are the brides of Jesus and have no right to marriage and intimate pleasures. The rules of the monastery imply modesty, devotion to the church, purity within the walls of the church. You must or must forget everything that happened outside the walls of the monastery. Work, prayers, modesty, all this will become a part of your life. However, many of them have difficulty observing this rule. Some are forced to remain celibate. While most enter into voluntary sexual relations with other priests and members of the church community, Catholic nuns and their struggle with celibacy old nuns and outwardly devote their whole lives and themselves to God. But a woman, she remains a woman and she wants to feel loved and desired. So not all girls can adhere to the rules. That is why there were often loud scandals about this. After all, a woman's heart could melt before a companion who decided to rest in a monastery or before a man who serves in their church. The vow of celibacy was unbearable for many nuns. He obliges them to remain unmarried and not to have sexual intercourse for the rest of their lives. This can be a daunting task, especially in today's world, which is often full of temptations. In the 19th century, the Catholic Church faced huge scandals due to the fact that nuns engaged in sexual relations and also gave birth to illegitimate children. These scandals brought shame to the church and caused a number of reforms in its ranks. To combat these problems, the church has carried out reforms such as raising the level of education of nuns and tightening the rules of their behavior. The church also encourages nuns to turn to a spiritual mentor to help them remain faithful to their vow of celibacy. After all, if the nuns receive better education and guidance, they will be able to adhere to their vows and remain faithful to their faith. Scandalous Revelations of Nuns in Rome The convent of Sant'Ambrogio della Massima held macabre rituals. The definition of macabre is usually synonymous with the concepts of scary, terrible, frightening associated with intimate practices. In the 1850s, the founder of the monastery of Sant'Ambrogio was stripped of the title of a best for encouraging other nuns to worship her as a false idol. The teacher of novices, Maria Luisa, took arranged night dates with her novices. These actions continued even after the founder of the monastery, Maria Agnes Ferrario, was removed from office and other nuns took her place. In the 1850s, Mrs. Maria Luisa organized a scandal related to the monastery and these perverted sexual practices. Maria Luisa introduced some unorthodox practices for new nuns, including rites of intimate initiation. Maria Luisa told the nuns that her body fluids contain divine blessings that can be shared during intimacy. During the trial, Maria Luisa admitted that the holy founder of the Order of Firao used similar methods to transfer her miracle drink to Maria Luisa and former novices. Novices were invited to spend the night in Maria Luisa's cell. If any of the nuns complained about the rituals, they mysteriously fell ill and died. Princess Caterina escaped from the convent and exposed Maria Luisa for decades. The Catholic Church hid the scandal in Sant'Ambrogio. The records of the Inquisition were hidden in a secret archive that was not open to the public. However, everything changed when scientists got access to the materials and one of them, in particular, revealed the scandalous behavior of Maria Luisa. Hubert Wolf, a professor of history at the University of Munster, discovered the Sant'Ambrogio scandal hidden deep in the Vatican archives. Wolf was one of the first scientists to gain access to the once secret archives of the Inquisition. In the book The Nuns of Sant'Ambrogio, The True Story of a Monastery in Scandal, published in 2015, Wolf tells the story of Maria Luisa Firao and their illegal behavior. So, what was Maria Luisa doing? One nun confessed Maria Luisa asked me to lie down in a certain position with my legs raised while she intertwined with me. Then she made movements and made a sound that I can't put into words when she told me to position myself so that I could take in her body fluids. Maria Luisa claimed that these fluids could cure diseases. She also asked the novices to lie face to face and breast to breast with her as part 
of the initiation ritual. The novice's mentor, Maria Luisa, did not just sleep with other nuns, she also kept in touch with one of the monastery's Jesuit confessors. When the two met at night, they cleared themselves of suspicion, citing religious communication. In fact, Maria Luisa managed to lure the confessor to bed using fake letters from the Virgin Mary. Maria Luisa asked the novice Maria Francesca to write sacred letters because of her beautiful handwriting, and soon everyone in the monastery followed the sacred order, including the confessor, who jumped into bed with Maria Luisa. Luisa Maria Agnes Ferrario, the founder of the monastery in the 19th century, was involved in numerous scandals. Despite being the spiritual mentor of Pope Leo XII, her misdeeds eventually became public and her reputation was tarnished. It turned out that she entered into a love relationship with her confessors and also participated in group classes. These revelations led to her becoming a scandalous and controversial figure. In 1816, the monastery miraculously escaped closure by the Inquisition, despite the fact that the abbess was deprived of her title. Behind closed doors, the illegal life in the monastery continued. Joseph, a trusted advisor to the Pope and an outstanding theologian, began an affair with one of the nuns in 1848. This relationship was a secret since sex with her confessor and another nun was forbidden. During the Inquisition process that followed the confessor's confession, it turned out that he had entered into a physical relationship with Maria Luisa. He tried to rationalize his relationships, claiming that they were purely spiritual in nature and were not dictated by lust. He claimed that his attention was focused on religious issues. Despite the confession, Joseph received a relatively light punishment. The Inquisition sentenced him to prison. The trial. During the trial, Maria Luisa faced criticism of her unorthodox methods. The trial of Maria Luisa revealed a whole network, non-traditional beliefs and practices related to the alleged transmission of supernatural substances. Those who challenged or opposed these practices faced severe consequences. During the trial, Maria Luisa was accused of unconventional relationships, worship of false saints, and even murder. This woman was sentenced to life imprisonment. However, one charge stood out among the others. Witnesses of the ritual involving Maria Luisa say that the so-called Jesuit bloodletting was actually an intimate ceremony. According to one of the witnesses, the male confessor made the sign of the cross on the neck of the penitent with his tongue. This blessing brought some penitents into ecstasy and forced them to kneel before the confessor. In 1816, Maria Luisa appeared before the court of the Inquisition, accused of false holiness and inappropriate behavior with confessors. She spent the rest of her life in exile, and the secret abode remained hidden for more than a hundred years. These revelations shed light on the disturbing secrets that were hidden within the walls of the monastery. It is important to note that even more secrets may be hidden within the walls of the monastery. This is a reminder that history can still hold many surprises and that much remain to be discovered.